All right, so I'm going to actually get started here. Um, welcome to NTOP Live. My name is Gabrielle Phelan. I'm an application engineer here at Topology. And today in the session, I'm just going to go through how you can really have con complete control of your geometry. And in this example, we're going to show you how um, we can manipulate like a, a gyroid structure, a TPMS structure in various ways. And so you can see that on my screen now. And um, what we have here is I just took a, a box and I applied a TPMS or gyroid structure here, but you notice that it's not a uniform structure where I'm varying different things such as the cell size and the wall thickness. And so in this session, I'm going to show you kind of a high level overview of how I did that and how we can take this same um, concept and apply it to like an actual part, like a pressure vessel in this case. So before we jump into the session, I'm just going to mention that um, if you're joining late or if you want to refer back to this video later, this is being recorded and we will post it um, on our support site as well as our YouTube site, along with um, this file that you can refer to as well. So again, here we're looking at a box in which I applied a TPMS structure. And I'll walk you through how I did this. And basically, I set up some variables, one just for box height and box length. And I have a block here called mold TPMS. And so I'm applying a TPMS structure to this volume, this box volume. I designate a cell size. And you'll notice that within my approximate thickness parameter here, I have this wall thickness variable. So what I did here is I created this, um, I was able to vary the thickness of my, uh, the walls of my gyroid. And if you've seen other sessions or other things with on our site, we talk a lot about this ramp block and how we can use it to drive different parameters. So I'm not gonna to get too far into what exactly uh, each frame input means, but essentially I'm able to uh, functionally grade different uh, parameters of my geometry using this plot. So you'll also notice that I'm able to manipulate the cell size here. And so I'm gonna spend more time on this aspect because I think this is really cool with an end top. So what we have here is I have another variable here that I created called cell size manipulation. And what I'm using is a remap field block. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this TPMS structure that I created earlier, and I'm essentially assigning new values to the X, Y, and Z coordinates of that structure. So I'll actually open up the um, info, info panel of this remap field block to give you um, more of a description of what's doing. So remap the values of the field by using separate X, Y, and Z scalar field components for a new evaluation location. So taking those X, Y, Z uh, coordinates and mapping them to new values. So in this case, I'm manipulating my structure in the X direction. So I'm taking all my X values and again, using that ramp block and saying, okay, as I move along this X axis uh, to the uh, my in max, so along the length of my box, I'm going to multiply my X values by these out min and out max values. So I'm actually gonna switch my resolution just to quickly show you what's going on here. And you'll see I'm kind of just warping the structure. So I'm applying the same concept in the Z direction as well. I just left my Y untouched in this case that the same concept um, within the Z direction. So that's like the kind of the high level overview of what's going on here um, using this remap field block. And this is really cool because, I mean, I can vary different things such as the wall thickness, but also the cell size. So we're really able to take um, what used to be a uniform structure and kind of warp it into something that fits our needs. And what I mean by that is maybe applying it to something like a heat exchanger, or um, in this case, I'll show you a pressure vessel. So I'm opening this new instance of NTOP and we're actually looking at a section cut of this pressure vessel here. And there's a lot of different things going on that I think are cool, like um, structural ribbing on the outside. You'll notice that I'm able to blend the structural ribbing at the boundaries. So we have different structural ribbing on the outer surfaces. 
But then if you look at the interior of this pressure vessel, I'm also varying the cell size and wall thickness. So again, just gonna show you how we're able to do that. If I go into this remap field block that I created, you'll see something very similar to what I showed in the other example. So again, varying my cell size in the X direction and the Z direction. And then I can play around with these values. I can iterate and really warp my geometry and create something really cool and what makes sense for this part. So once again, you'll see that I'm able to vary the thickness as well. But um, in the other example, I did this kind of in a, a more uniform way where here I did something really cool in which I was able to actually start integrating simulation results. So if I jump into this wall thickness variable that I created, you'll see that I have a variable called imported pressure map. And so what I did here in this workflow is I actually um, performed a simulation and I got a, a map of pressure values and I was able to import that field into this instance of NCOP, start designating some in min and max, so at a value of 78 pascals or um, 5.0 to the times 10 to the six pascals. Maybe I want my wall thickness to be 1.75 millimeters or 3.5 millimeters. So I'll show you what this pressure map looks like. You'll see that I'm able to take a, a field from a point map. So importing a point map, I'm converting that to a field, smoothening that field and using that as my field, scalar field input within my wall thickness route. So I'm actually going to pop open what this field looks like. Let's turn off some views and you'll see this field that I was able to import. And so the higher red indicating um, the higher pressure. And so what NTOP enables me to do is connect all these different workflows, simulation, um, all these ramps, these remap fields, and tie them completely together, create an integrated workflow in which I can vary the wall thickness and cell size using the simulation results and really iterate different values here. So again, if I could have done this with uh, wall thickness, but also maybe like the bias length of my geometry. So here we have um, another parameter, approximate bias length. I could have uh, varied this using a ramp as well. You'll notice this field, this icon to the left of these parameters, it's like a field icon. So it's indicating, hey, you can drive that parameter using a ramp block. So that was um, pretty much a high level overview of how we can manipulate TPMS structures. And um, furthermore, how we can take it a step further and vary parameters using imported simulation. So um, follow, again, following this session, I'm gonna be posting an example file on our support site. I'm going to, this video is also being recorded again, will be posted later. And then, um, yeah, we're gonna continue to have these NTOP live sessions I believe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week. So I encourage you to attend those. Um, but at this time, I'm going to start taking questions if anyone has any. Okay, so question says, can you comment to where you obtain the pressure map? So actually that pressure map, I, um, I performed that simulation in a different instance of NTOP. So that was simulation done within NTOP. Um, and I just wanted to show the process of importing a field, but that could have been done with another analysis tool. We could have created a, a, a point map from like ANSYS or something, converted that to a, a field, and then use that with an end top. Any more questions for me? So 
So I guess another thing I'm going to show is um, in the top right corner, if you have the updated version of NTOP, you, if you select this question mark, it can take you to our support site. Or this can also be accessed via support.ntopology.com. But um, we have a lot of different articles here that help you guide help guide you through these processes and different tutorials that you can follow. And again, I'm going to be posting this one on our support site as well. So if there's no more questions, um, I'm going to wrap up this live session. If you have any more questions following this, please feel free to reach out to me um, at Entopology and we'll get them answered. But thank you for attending. <laughs>